his motive for murder to quench a delusional thirst for blood. to an unhappy home in a middle-class neighborhood of Sacramento. His father is a disciplinarian, and his mother suffers from delusions. She accuses her husband of infidelity and spends hours crying. Both parents take their frustrations out on a young Richard. Chase's mother forces him to eat until he becomes violently ill. Richard begins acting out. He starts torturing and mutilating animals. As an adult, Chase starts showing signs of mental illness. He abuses drugs, pushing him further into his delusions. He becomes deeply paranoid and believes people are out to harm him. Chase boards up the windows and doors of his apartment. He sees numerous psychiatrists without result. With no help in sight, Chase slowly spirals deeper into his isolated world of delusion and fantasy. But after consuming the blood and organs of animals, his delusions persist. Chase begins hunting for new sources of blood. Sacramento, 1978. A pregnant woman is savagely murdered in her home. Blood is drained from her body. One month later, three more people are discovered in a small home. Again, the bodies have been drained of blood. In some cases, organs are missing. creates a profile, white male in his mid-twenties, thin and undernourished. Police immediately receive several tips implicating Chase. Richard Chase is arrested. He confesses to the crimes and tells investigators he had to do it. Chase is charged with six murders. The brutal nature of the crimes and the disturbing element of vampirism draws media outlets from across California. After several psychiatric reviews, Chase is found sane. While doctors believe schizophrenia fueled his delusions, the court determines that Chase could distinguish right from wrong. After a four-month trial, Chase is found guilty of six counts of first-degree murder. He is sentenced to death. After less than a year in prison, 
Chase commits suicide by hoarding a lethal dose of his psychotherapeutic medication. 